you want to write amazing sounding guitar based songs that perform really well on YouTube or on Spotify or any kind of other streaming platform or maybe you're even planning a classic CD, vinyl or box set release. In any case, if making and writing music is your life and you want to be successful with this, you need to avoid the following six songwriting mistakes at all costs. I got very lucky and could work on a couple of gold and multi-platinum productions as a guitar player over the last years. And today I want to reveal the key factors and songwriting secrets that I picked up in those last couple of years that changed and improved my writing forever. I prepared a special Cubase session for today's video that will show you how small song writing changes took a basic and not exactly promising demo to a song that got over 4 million clicks on YouTube and around 700,000 streams on Spotify within a year. And I got another song in there that reached around 900,000 clicks on YouTube and 900,000 plays on Spotify as well. Now it's not all about numbers of course. Really bad songs also often get a lot of exposure. But I feel like there's a lot to learn with those two specific songs, since they are my most successful ones yet. So let's start right away. Make sure to shred over that like button if you're as excited about songwriting as I am. That way I can see if you want more content like this. All right, so the first song I'd like to start out with today is unsurprisingly Through the Night. This is a metal song that we got to do together with David Hasselhoff and that one made it all the way into the Joe Rogan podcast. Q Stack? He's, he's featured, this is a newer song. Give me a little bit of this, come on, yes. give me a little bit of this. But when I play the original demo that I recorded for this track, it doesn't exactly sound promising. Okay, we got a synth right here. The accents you might recognize from the original. Another synth layer. It's still building up. So here we are at the first very common songwriting mistake already, not getting the intro right. So with this very first arrangement and demo, the vocals would have come in at around one minute of the song. So when I was writing this, I was already imagining the music video in my mind. This kind of long and epic build up until the payoff at the one minute mark when David starts to sing. But here are the three key reasons why this doesn't work with most songs. First of all, today's audience mostly doesn't have the patience anymore to sit through that. Imagine getting this demo recommended on Spotify with a long build up that essentially goes nowhere. I'm pretty sure that you're gonna skip it and that you will listen to something else. Skip it. The second reason, even if it does kind of work for your song, your audience might get a bit tired of it after a couple of listens and this definitely hurts the longevity of the song on Spotify or on YouTube or on any platform. And the third big reason why this would have been a huge mistake is playlisting. So this song made it onto a Spotify editorial playlist. Those are Spotify's very own playlists and as you can see this playlist has around 70,000 followers and that means that we got a lot of plays, a lot of exposure and a lot of new listeners in the first couple of months of the release and the huge huge pro tip that we learned about with those Spotify playlists. They don't really like songs with extremely long intros because it kind of messes up the transition in between the songs. And of course, it also doesn't exactly add to the energy or the momentum of the playlist. So if you're a new act or a new band with a really long intro in your music video, I'm willing to bet that this will almost certainly ruin your exposure. I speak from experience because we actually made this mistake with one of my favorite music videos ever. Yeah, right now we're at the 30 second mark and I think almost everybody clicked away from the video at this point and this was quite a huge disappointment for us because the rest of the video is actually really cool so in the final arrangement of the track we essentially trimmed down this entire section that you can see right here so those three blocks into this section so you can see a super short intro then the main riff is already starting and we already added some vocals in there We also added some vocals in the intro right away. So mistake number two is very common amongst rock and metal players. It's essentially working without any harmonic context in your songwriting. So maybe you're sometimes struggling with finding harmonies or melodies. Maybe you can't find the right scale for your guitar solo. Or maybe something sounds a bit off with the chords and cadences that you're using. So for this song, I was unsurprisingly working with one of the most common keys in rock and metal, E minor. Yeah, yeah. I actually know what kind of scales, harmonies, intervals or chords I could use. I can always break these rules if I'm feeling very naughty. But overall, learning how to write in a specific key is absolutely necessary. Let me show you one practical example right away with the verse from the demo. So this kind of chord riff that you can hear looping over and over again and very loud synthesizers. Then you have the pickup, then the bass, 
but it's essentially always the same and there's no real kind of structure or build up to this. And one simple fix to make this much less boring actually came from our producer Daniel Fellner. Check out the three chords that he added in the verse in the final version and the huge difference that it makes. So dark is the night we face, but we won't face it alone. We stand under so with this much better version you essentially have three blocks of that repeating chord riff and then you have a fourth block at the end with those additional chords so you get that really satisfying sense of resolution before the next repetition begins. Three and now I like to recommend this website to my students on Patreon because it shows you the scale notes, in our case of the E minor scale, and it also shows you the basic chords on every single scale degree in the key and also the seventh chords. And you even have some common chord progressions down below that you can experiment with. So we were essentially adding the chord on the fourth scale degree, the chord on the sixth scale degree, the seventh scale degree, and then we were resolving back into the tonic, the first scale degree. The third really common rock and metal songwriting mistake is all about avoiding dynamics and interesting motives in your music. Let's switch to a different song right now called Alive. I guess it's the most successful one on Spotify to date, mainly because it was added to the official industrial metal playlist from Spotify. This one has over 200,000 followers and my personal goal with this production was just making it extremely powerful, almost outrageously energetic. So much energy. So I essentially wanted to avoid any moment where the energy level is suddenly dropping a bit. I wanted it to just constantly remain at this level. And guess what? It didn't work. The reason for that, in my humble opinion, is that heavy parts and really energetic and aggressive parts actually need some more dynamic counterparts to make them even heavier and even more powerful. And as soon as we implemented those dynamic dips and curves, everything just kind of fell into place. And I think this is one of the main reasons why people enjoy this song so much. So you have that kind of driving and heavy main riff. But one interesting thing that we were experimenting with was just deleting the guitar tracks in the verse. So you can hear just a little bit of guitars here and there, but mostly it's just drums, bass and vocals. So we still kept the energy flowing, which was my biggest goal. But by not prominently including guitars in the mix right here in this second block that you can see, which is the verse, we could really build up the intensity once again so that the chorus hits 10 times as hard. Yeah. And if I would delete this part in between and go from the main riff with the heavy guitars right into the chorus. It still sounds okay of course, but the big impact of the chorus in this song gets completely lost. And the second thing that I really like to do that kind of falls into this category is working with rhythmic or melodic motifs in my songwriting. It's actually really cool and maybe not even that obvious in Through the Night for example. So right at the beginning you have this basic rhythmic motif. Then you can hear it again in the main riff with those accents on one and two. One, two. One, two. You can even hear it with the chords in the verse. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Of course, I also included it in the chorus. And overall, I think this is a great method to make your song a bit more catchy. By the way, if you have seen my face or heard my slight Austrian accent quite a couple of times by now, put that cookie down! And you're still lurking on the channel, make sure to finally join our amazing community today by subscribing. You won't regret it, it feels pretty good to be one of us shredders. The fourth songwriting mistake is actually very similar to the first one that we discussed, outros. Terrible ending. And this is another quite personal story because we were really happy with the success of the music video for Alive on YouTube. This one has a quite long and very interesting sequence in the outro. So right here you can see the lights are going on and people are actually taking the set apart that we are playing in. But we also uploaded the same version of the song to Spotify. And when you look at the audio file right here, check out how long this outro actually is. So it's just the same kind of loop. It's repeating over and over again and slowly fading out. And as soon as we tried to get in touch with different playlists, they basically all told us that the song is really cool and they really enjoy the song, but they won't add it to their playlist because the outro is just way too long. And that of course completely ruins the flow of their playlist because users will start to click away. Please be smarter than us and don't include one minute outros in your songs. 
So mistake number five I want to talk about today is very guitar specific. It's about writing and recording bad guitar solos that don't really work with your song. Taking Through the Night as an example, listen to the original guitar solo I wrote for the song in the demo. So what I sometimes struggle with in the songwriting process is just investing a lot of time in the arrangement, in all the different parts, in writing the lyrics. And then after all that, I also want to write and record a guitar solo for my song. And sometimes in the past I ran out of energy at this point and just slapped something on that sounded okay or quite good. And that was the case with the original guitar solo. Thankfully I got called out on it. It starts off kind of cool with that classic harmonic and whammy bar action. But that following melodic motive is kind of boring and uninspired. And then the scale run, so the shredding that should be the big highlight of the solo, the climax, basically just goes absolutely nowhere. So it's not terrible, it kind of works, but it's very underwhelming and the guys in the studio basically said, man, you can do better than that. Go ahead. Impress me. Naturally, as a guitar player, I was pissed at first, but it pushed me to come up with something much cooler. Check out the final solo. So I'm really really happy with that one. It's a short solo spot, but the structure is really cool from the dive bomb in the beginning. Then I really like the sweep picking with the tapping on top and the big bends. And the following alternate picking line was the fastest one I ever recorded at this point. So I was really proud of getting that line right. And then to make it musical and satisfying in the end I was quoting the main synthesizer line. So it turned out to be one of my favorite short solo spots ever and I got my very first shout out from Guitar World magazine as well. Long story short, none of this would have happened if we kept the original solo. And the sixth and most important mistake I want to talk about today concerns your demos. Please don't record sloppy demos. Sloppy. We've all been to this point where we just want to try out a new idea and see where it goes. But sending out a really sloppy demo to your bandmates, to your producer or collaborators of any kind might really turn them off from working with you. Even if you include phrases in your email like, it's just a demo, it sounds bad right now, but it will sound amazing once we get into the studio. As an example, this is a demo that I recorded many years ago. So it's not about the sound quality or anything. As you can hear, the rhythm guitars are not in time with the toms at all. And it would have taken just two or three more takes to get this tight. And it would have made a huge difference. When I was still playing guitar and touring with Belfigor, we played a festival with Arch Enemy, which is a really cool band. And I was talking to Michael Amott, who's a really cool guy and a great guitar player. We were essentially talking about doing a song together and we exchanged email addresses and it was going great. But the demo I sent was just really unprofessional. I was assuming that he knows that it's just a demo and it will get better. But of course he rightfully declined. He probably assumed that this is not gonna be great. If you want to learn how to write an outstanding rock or metal guitar track from start to finish, I just posted a really awesome songwriting course for beginner and intermediate guitarists on Patreon. With these seven chapters, you will unlock the formula of going from a basic but great sounding main idea all the way to a professional sounding mix and master of your future hit song. The link to this is in the description and in the first comment down below. I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Happy shredding and happy songwriting.